This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Kwaidon, directed by Masaki Kobayashi uh, from 1965. The uh, tagline for this movie from Letterboxd, bizarre, unearthly, terrifying, a nation's legend, an author's imagination, a director's creation manifest in the superlative, Kwaidon. And the synopsis, Mm. taking its title from an archaic Japanese word meaning ghost story, this anthology adapts four folktales. A penniless samurai marries for money with tragic results. A man stranded in a blizzard is saved by Yuki the Snow Maiden, but his rescue comes at a cost. Blind musician Hoichi is forced to perform for an audience of ghosts. An author relates the story of a samurai who sees another warrior's reflection in his teacup. So, RJ... I watched Kwaidon, uh just a couple years ago because I've always heard that it was a big-time uh, Japanese horror masterpiece. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's been given that Criterion Collection rub being in there, um, but mm-hmm. I just it took me a while to get to it. I've seen a lot of the other stuff, like Hasu and Onibaba and mm-hmm. Jigoku and all that stuff. Uh, this was like one of the last ones on that list. I was always kind of like uh, put off by the movie's runtime <laughs> because it was like yeah. two hours and forty minutes. And I was like, "Oh, that's weird." Like most, mm-hmm. like most anthologies are like less than that. So what, what what's so special about this one that this one's got to be deeper? I don't know what I've been on about runtimes way too much lately. But yeah, uh, it's a re- it's a real it's bringing the show down, dude. <laughs> I know. Uh, so anyway, uh, when I watched it, whatever a year or two ago. I was kind of like, oh, this is really boring. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is like really, really <laughs> slowly paced. Um, and so when we started this podcast, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to watch Quiet On again someday. And that day has come. And I was like, hmm, I wonder after watching like all these criterions and my, my palate has become more refined <laughs> and that like, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe my, uh, my ability to pay attention to things, my attention span and whatnot has uh, improved. And this will be like a totally different experience. I'll be like, wow, mm-hmm. what was I thinking? <laughs> well, this movie's so much better than I remember. Uh, and that didn't happen. Uh-huh. Uh, I feel pretty much the exact same way uh, about yep. this, uh, there's like some stuff of it that I was like, oh yeah, this story. Oh yeah, this story. Oh yeah, yeah this story. Oh yeah, that one. And that that was about it. And I'd watch it. Um, I would say that even though I I find this a fairly kind of boring, slowly paced movie, it moves mm-hmm. along at a fairly good pace. Like it, I was surprised. Um, I was like, kind of like, oh, that didn't actually feel that bad. Like for something, it has a weird feel to it like each Mm -hmm. each story on its own i don't think is like super interesting but uh it does like it it wraps up and uh i was kind of like yeah i don't know i just feel so (laughs) indifferent to this um i don't know like i i love me some uh japanese manga comics i love japanese Mm -hmm. horror stuff in particular i think that they do a lot of horror stuff way better uh than Mm -hmm. americans do uh, that Junji Ito, Kazu Amuzu, stuff like that. Those guys rock. Uh, and I, I like that J-horror. I made an entire list of like 500 and 600 like Japanese horror movies that exist. So I'm like mm-hmm. invested in this stuff. But this is just one where I'm like, hmm, I, this is a beautiful looking movie. Uh, don't, yeah. don't, don't get me wrong. This movie looks pretty great. But there is just something. It's really repetitive is kind yeah. of my uh, complaint. But uh, we can kind of. I'll let you talk about it and we can kind of go into the, because there's basically it's four episodes uh, mm-hmm. of this whole thing. But RJ, what did you think of your first time watch of this Quiet On? Quiet On? More like quite long. <laughs> yeah, this movie's boring. <laughs> it's boring and it, it is, it's painfully long. Um, you're, you're right. Uh, even though we don't want to talk about run times anymore, uh, I was really bogged down by this, man. I checked it like half an hour in and I was like, oof. <laughs> and then uh, I checked it an hour and 20 minutes in and I was like, oof. Did you? And then when uh, did you, I checked okay. it. At, so at, that's exactly when I checked was at the uh, half one, hour and an one hour, 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 one hour, 19. It was during the battle yep. scene. 
right? Yep. 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 That there's something about that where I was like, God damn it! Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and you realize you're not even halfway through yet, and you're just like, holy fuck! Well, well an hour twenty is exactly the halfway mark, and I was like, okay. I feel that's good. We're in the third story and we're halfway yeah. through. That's all right. Well, I don't know, man. Like, cause I was watching this. I, I checked at 30 minutes, an hour and 20. And then, uh, at two ten again, I was just like, Oh my gosh. Um, it's long. Uh, it's repetitive. Um, it looks great. I think particularly yeah. the second story. Oh like yeah. The, the snow lady one. We'll that one is, snow. That one um, is really, really good. Uh, you could watch that alone, and y- it would be pretty, pretty enjoyable. Because like the mix of the snow and then the red skies, like with, the reds and with oranges the, with the, the blue, eye, the and the eyes white. in the sky. Yeah, it's awesome. So uh, that one is really good. Um, and I actually like the uh, the first three stories. I think they're pretty cool. I just think they're too drawn drawn out, right? Like, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh yeah, the credits are long as hell. That really fucking brought me out of it to start. Yeah. So the opening of this movie, can like, we start talking? We can start breaking this movie down because I I'm, I find it interesting because this movie is actually really well regarded. Like a lot of people that yeah. I follow, they all like rank this quite high, and I'm yeah. like, why? <laughs> like, do, do you I, want me to break it down? Okay. Well, uh, why the people are into it? So yeah. But, but the first thing I'll mention out there is like this is an odd one because I was watching my DVD of this and it's got mm-hmm. an, an inverted criterion collection thing. Cause usually it's like white text on black. Yeah. This one though, it's white with black text over top. And I was like, mm. what the fuck? Like that's like a first in our watching this yeah. stuff. Like I've never seen that before. So that was weird. Um, and then I'm like, Oh, Hey, it's Toho. Cool. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, then we get like, Five minutes of opening credits of uh, swirly ink uh, in, yeah. w- in water. And it's like, that looks nice. That's very abstract. Um, mm-hmm. But it tells but- you like every single credit. And then it breaks down every single title with all the players of mm-hmm. each sub story of that mm-hmm. over and over and over again. So it's like quite paced out. Um, yeah. And then the, 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 the story, the movie starts and you, we have like a narrator who kind of like does like an yeah. introduction to each story, which is like typical. Uh, there's yep. no, there's no framing device in this. Uh, it's essentially, I mean, we're talking about a horror anthology. That's what it is. Yep. Um, and yeah. Uh, the, the first one up is the black hair. It opens up and it looks <laughs> beautiful. It's this dark mm-hmm. abandoned home. Uh, but then like, it's so like, there's so much narration and like, it does, mm-hmm. it's like, you kind of know, exactly where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I've seen enough samurai stuff to know it's like, oh, oh, this guy's like a scumbag who's leaving his family behind. <laughs> we all know that's not going to end well for him. Uh, yeah. He dumps he dumps his lady to go move on to better things. He says, well, hey, you should go uh, date a, uh, a richer man than me and then we'll both be better off. So long. Mm-hmm. And he moves off. He, he He's somewhat moderately more successful uh, in his other life, but his wife's terrible. <laughs> And mm-hmm. it's, it's a shitty relationship. He really regrets uh, leaving his first wife behind. And he decides to go back. And the, the, the place is all run down now. And she's still there looking great. And they they reconcile seemingly. And he, he says, yeah, I did the wrong thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then they, like, go to sleep. And when he wakes up, she's been dead all along. She's a corpse. And, mm-hmm. then, and then the title, Black Hair, Starts to attack him. He, um, talk about a bad hair day. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, he leaves the house, but the hair gets him and mm-hmm. sucks his soul. So I, <laughs> I, uh, I actually thought the first story was okay. It's just it's too long. Like if this oh, was five so minutes, fucking long, man. If it was like I'd... five minutes long, it would probably be a nice short. But uh, it's just it's too long because it's like I'm not interested in any of this. So it's well, it's yeah, it, there's not enough in what is being shown to be interesting. Like, there's just too much, and you're just like, okay, okay, all right. Yep. And it's like, no, oh, no, that's that was just a really long first story, and there's more to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second one, like we said, looks really snow. good, beautiful. Uh, yep. it's it's lots of it's all like sets, um, mm-hmm. but like they're really like beautifully constructed. Like, it's like yeah. a, it's a fake snowland that. Mm-hmm. 
but it, does, it doesn't. It's not illusionary, but it's like, wow, this looks really nice. Like the colors, uh, yep. the audio soundscape in this particular mm-hmm. one is really good. Like the creating of the storm and stuff like that. All the sound effects, they they all sound fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a story about uh, two dudes who are traversing a like blizzard. Uh, they wind up in a like cave. And uh, they fall asleep, and when one uh, buddy wakes up, he sees uh, his his uh, friend is like frozen to death, and there is a white woman in sn- in like blue drabs who are like who's like sucking his soul out, lots mm-hmm. of souls being sucked. Yeah, um, and she decides to spare him because he's young, and mm-hmm. they make she makes a deal. It's like. All right, you can continue living your life, but if you ever tell anybody about this, I will know, and I'll come and kill you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I." So he he goes back. He goes back home. And he's like, <laughs> "Is that is that a quote?" I. Yes, I. That that is the Japanese. I. Mm-hmm. Um. So he goes there. Uh. This this girl rolls rolls through the the village, and they hit it off. They get mm-hmm. they get married. They have kids. Uh. Mm-hmm. Everything's going swell. But then one night, Buddy starts just talking about that night that he got spared by this weird lady in white. And it turns out that the woman he's married is the lady in white. And she's mm-hmm. very... But of course, now she's conflicted because she's held it, had this whole relationship with this guy and had children <laughs> with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's funny about this is in the Tales from the Dark Side movie, there mm-hmm. is a story that is a complete rip off of this called lover's vow uh but they yeah. do they do it with a gargoyle <laughs> a gargoyle yes uh and it's, like, it's it's like the, the it, no it's actually kind of like if you think about like gargoyles in movies there's actually not a lot of like gargoyles uh in this but it's yeah actually, but it's like definitely it was like the best story in that short as well mm-hmm um, cause like the effects in it are quite neat. Uh, and, but it does a better job of like, cause it's also set con- like in a contemporary world. It's not like mm-hmm. a, uh, medieval Japanese story where you're like, oh, everything's kind of alien and strange here rather than like, oh, this is like New York city, like, or like yeah. cont- whatever. Um, and then apparently the one thing I was reading is that this was the story that when this was uh, being shown in the U S back in the sixties, this one got cut. This is the one they they took out Why? of it. I know. I don't know. They could have literally taken out any of the other three, and it would have been better. Yeah. The first or the last one. Take either of those ones. Oh, out. I disagree about the last one. I I think that that's actually my favorite. Oh God. Yeah. Okay, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there. So yeah, Woman in the Snow is like definitely the, like visually is like the best one, but yeah. it's also slow, and it's like these. Everything could have just been tightened up, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe we were just missing out on the lyrical editing and storytelling of Masaki Kobayashi, RJ. <laughs> Isn't that, couldn't you say that that's always where we fail? We, we miss out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So story number three, uh, Hoichi the Earless. Uh, this, so this is the one where the poster comes from with the, yep. ma- the tattooed faced man. Uh, it's like, what's the deal with that? So Mm -hmm. this opens up with just like the most endless battle sequence. Oh God. It is just like, I don't know what's going on. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, and what, and it's all, again, it's on a set. So it's on a sound set and like, there's, there's no trying to make an illusion of a battle scene. Like it's very stylized, very theatrical. That's fine, but it is long. Mm -hmm. Um, the only highlight of it, my note about this was the blowing smoke in front of the illustrations of the battle, uh, that this would be like referencing is very Wes (laughs) Anderson-y. Uh, yeah, I guess. But other than that, it's just like this. Oh, it's so long. And uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, a guy gets shot in the face with an arrow. <laughs> that that was all right. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm I, my note is pretty whatever. <laughs> so this is when I checked the runtime and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, at least we're halfway through. Yeah, this is the longest of the th- of the four stories. Yeah. Uh, the battle intro is painfully long. It, it really is because like. It's the thing. It's the it's the whole trade off. Like that third story is like this entire movie. It looks like there's some scenes that look really good, yeah. and there's a couple cool ideas, but it's so drawn out that um, it really takes you out of it. Because uh, like there's a couple scenes in the battle that look really nice, but it's just so long, and you're like, you want it to like move on to the next thing, and then the stuff with 
the uh, the blind musician, like, it's kind of cool, but it takes a while to get where it's going, and you're like, okay. <laughs> and then uh, it's got some cool ghost effects uh, when uh, his whole body's tattooed, so he's invisible to the ghost, but not his ears. Yeah. And you're like, oh, cool, look, he's see-through, but not his ears. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I thought it was pretty crazy that the ghost was just like, fuck you. He's like, you don't want to be our, you don't want to play music for us anymore. So he just rips his ears off. Mm-hmm. It's a real prick move, mm-hmm. you ask me. Uh, real unfriendly ghosts. And, but then it ends, basically. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. <laughs> you're like, it had a couple cool sequences, and, but. And, uh, then, and then there's another, like, march of ghosts coming. Yeah. And, and, and then there's more of that. And then, like, even more of him singing about that original so, battle. So many. And you're just. So many songs, Japanese so songs, many songs. And processions. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. Oh, man. Which, yeah. Which is like, so like, that's what I mean. I think this one is you get the a feel for the whole movie as a, or like the whole movie because it's like cool parts, looks great, too long, kind of boring. I wish it was over. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we're talking about the fourth one now. Yeah. You it, said it was it, your it, favorite. And it comes to, yep, this one I feel was my favorite of the four. Uh, I'm just going to leave. I, I, I will just mention that uh, I, 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 legit probably fell asleep watching uh the earless one <laughs> like I, yeah. I i dozed off and i was like yeah well that's mm-hmm. okay i'm not i don't feel too bad about yeah. it like i just that it, it's so low ambient sound and like nothing's talking nothing's happening and i was just like it's bedtime <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and, so and, and maybe when i watched in a cup of tea i was like well rested and i was like yeah mm-hmm. this, this is this is more like it i like this uh but go ahead i was gonna just say um, until, until you brought up the cup of tea thing, I was actually, I totally forgot what the fourth story was. I only watched this two days ago and cause I have no notes on it. No. I have om- hardly any notes at all, but like I, uh, I was waiting for you to say what it was because I was like, I honest to God don't remember what the last story was. And I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily a mark on that story itself mm-hmm. or that I had just watched like two and a half hours of other long boring stuff mm-hmm. but by the time the fourth story came i was so checked out yeah that like i was enough. i wasn't even on my phone or anything like that i was just lying on the couch with my fucking head <laughs> up in the air and i was just like you, you, yeah. I, I was like how much longer is left 20 minutes mm-hmm. okay and i was honestly just i was staring at like the fucking ceiling for like 20 minutes just like yeah. is i was like i mean i can say that i watched it because yep. I was in the room while it was playing. <laughs> but, uh, like, and I occasionally I would, like, w- watch the screen. And then it was just, like, that guy making the really sassy face in the tea. And I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> oh, I was man. I was totally checked out by the time the fourth story started. Yeah. Um, yeah so ch- sassy face man in the thing. Yeah. So this is a story about, I guess, like, he's, I, I'm not, he's not a lord. He's kind of like a like the head of the security of this house, like a, of a royal royalty's house. And this guy, he like, he's opened up his, like his little jar of tea, to take a drink. Mm-hmm. When he looks at it, there's a guy staring at him like mm-hmm. out, of, out, of, out of the reflection. It's not his reflection. It's this guy. And you're like, huh, yeah, that's weird. So the guy closes it. And he's like, ugh. And he like, mm-hmm. Oh, opens it again. And this guy's like is staring at him. And it's like, well, that's really weird. He dumps the mm-hmm. water out. He's like, oh, maybe there's something in the water. Uh, <laughs> and so he, he goes and gets himself another uh, cup. He looks down at it. Yeah. And now the guy's like a little closer looking him in the face. And he's like, it's, it's like a weird smirky face, but it's also a really creepy side smile. And you're just like, mm-hmm. hmm, well, that's, that's really odd. Uh, that's not yeah. normal. But this buddy here, he <laughs> makes a made, he makes a mistake. He takes a drink. He's like, "Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm gonna drink the water anyway." Yeah. It's like that. You just don't drink ghost water, dude. Um, yeah. Everybody fucking knows that. Yeah. Like, like, come on. Come so on. from this point forward, uh, it's all downhill for our protagonist here. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is now being haunted by this guy whose face he saw in the tea, mm-hmm. and uh, he's like, "This ghost tea man. He's not happy about what's <laughs> going on with him." 
Uh, mm-hmm. There's like attempted sword fights, but it's not going well because you can't sword fight a ghost sometimes. But, sometimes. But so he accidentally like actually does injure this ghost guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he like kind of disappears off. He starts running around the castle saying, I just, I just stabbed a guy. He broke in and like, we got to catch him. Uh, but of course they're like, what are you talking about? There's like nobody here. Nobody got in. There's no blood. You're out of your uh-huh. mind. What is up? What is up with you? Mm-hmm. Um, I think this one's also got the belly rubs. Like he's like laying on his side and, uh, <laughs> and his like, his late, his like woman's just like rubbing his side. <laughs> which, oh like, yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, there is also... Uh, what kind of happens from there? So they're all kind of like, well, that guy's going crazy. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, he's visited that night by three dudes who show up in like primary colors, red, yellow, mm-hmm. uh, blue. Um, and yep. they're uh, the stab T-man's like dudes, his entourage. guard. His entourage he sends on saying, hey, in a month, he's coming back. And he's going to finish the job. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, fuck you guys. And we get a, like a fairly prolonged like sequence of him trying to kill these three ghosts and yeah. as pointed out it's quite difficult to kill ghosts ghosts um, we even yeah. get kind of like a weird uh kind of like callback to swing time because there's a scene where uh <laughs> the guy's in the foreground and there's the three shadows behind him and they keep like yeah. kind of like moving in and out while he's trying to strike them and attack them mm-hmm. uh and then before anything can happen we kind of cut away from that story and we get to the author who is writing about this story. And he's mm-hmm. trying to like figure out how do I end this story? And like, and so he's, and so he, so he, so he's drinking tea uh-huh. and he's just like, Hmm, like there's like, I could end this like in a conventional way. Like, where do you go? Do you just tell it where like the guy shows up at the end of the month, like the go say, or do something else. And he's trying to like think about where he could go with it. Um, yeah. but then there's like, there's like this big jar, this big pot of water in this room that he's writing in and you're like, Oh, what's going to, what's going to happen? What's going to be the, the big twist? And, mm-hmm. uh, eventually, uh, writer man opens up his, this pot and they're like, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. And it's like, well, what, what's actually in there? And then he looks down <gasps> and it's like, I don't know. This like weird old man is in the water looking out. <laughs> and, How old? I don't know. He looked, I mean, he's probably like a young guy made to look old, but he's like a 50 year old man, which I guess in the 60s might, might as well make you like 80. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's just staring out and he kind of reaches toward the audience, and that's kind of the end. Um, yep. So, what I liked about In a Cup of Tea is that the actual the pacing this whole movie has is so much better suited to this story. Like, because mm-hmm. it's a low key story about an inanimate object. It's like a cup of tea. So there's yep. not, there's like no, like you don't have to do anything simple. It's kind of like my favorite type of like horror story stuff where it's like, you know, the writer's process was one day he was looking at a cup of tea and he just was like drinking out of it and he saw his own reflection. He's like, hmm, mm-hmm. what if I saw someone else's reflection? Someone in else. It? And then he just yep. worked, and then he just worked backwards from there. Like, that's kind of like, where the whole idea came from and there's no morality to it there's like no like big payoffs to this idea it's just like what if like something just showed up in your cup of coffee and it's like kind of the better stuff of like j-horror where it's like oh what if you're like watching a videotape and there was like a ghost that came on it and it came through your tv it's like super simple low-key kind of thought like thought process but it it also is sometimes the low-key non-high concept stuff is sometimes the best the best and so, so i felt that like the pacing really worked for this type of story. But the fact that mm-hmm. we've seen that pacing applied to every single story and every single story feels the exact same way. None of them feel different. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just what bogs this down so much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like listening to you talk about the T1, it's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's like I was saying, I was just, I was so like, uninterested over anymore. Two, two hours in, I can definitely yeah. see one. Like, so I was thinking too, I'm like, hmm, what would be ways to like solve this movie's problems? And it's like, maybe it's like the, the order of the stories too. Like maybe it's yeah. like, I don't know though. <laughs> order of the stories and like maybe, I don't know, cut out like 20 minutes, guys. It doesn't need to be that <laughs> do, long. Do, do a little, cut out some excess. Yeah. Some, some some of these the, things that you have in there, it's just yeah. like, what was the point of that? The um, first one, you could cut out 10 minutes. The second one, you could cut out 10 minutes. The third one, you could cut out like 20 <laughs> That battle sequence is like so goddamn long. Yeah, it's like it's like what, half what, an hour What is this, long. Alexander Nevsky? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, but that battle was cool. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I don't know. I'm I'm I, I think I'm on the same page with you, man. Uh, I don't know. Maybe people like it because it looks really good. I sure like, but I, it's just like not uh, the best. Not very thing, interesting. Not, not the best th- time you could spend. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe what should I do? Should I read uh, who hates this or who loves this or maybe both? Why don't we, why don't we do one like do one okay. of each? You know? Okay. Well, okay. We got here a uh, half a star from Andrew Greger. Insanely mind-numbingly boring. Uh-huh. Unless you are super into Japanese folklore or painfully slow movies, skip this one. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of well. I, I don't hate this movie. It's like kind of like it's got like merit, but it's just like I would not. I don't want to watch this ever again. Um, yeah, me neither. Blue Void gave this one and a half star. A lot of people are enamored by the visual style of this film. It didn't work for me. It is a stylized studio set, which doesn't look bad, but doesn't lend itself to the material either. It's overly long and moves at a glacial pace. Uh, this is a whole lot of nothing going on. It was a little mm-hmm. painful. Um, well, I wouldn't call it painful, and I don't think it was like the sets that necessarily are a problem. It's just the the feel of everything felt the same. Yeah, I thought the set, like, that was probably like one of the things I actually liked. Yeah. It was like some of the sets, so yes, yeah, absolutely. Some of the yeah, like the yeah. the production stuff like is this. like it looks great. Like I love the look of it. Like the that house, the manor in the first house, uh, the all like the outdoor sets and the blizzard. And then like actually, we didn't talk mm-hmm. about it in the second story too. There's like um, where they cut from like winter to summer, and you get those beautiful yeah. like uh, horizon shots of like him just like standing in profile. That stuff is yeah. like fantastic. It looks so good, but yeah, I. The pacing, just everything feels like identical. Uh, so some mm-hmm. some five star reviews for uh, Quite On, uh, Kyler five stars, fucking peak cinema. <laughs> what what peak peak? Uh, yeah. Wizard Master gave it five oh, stars. God. Watched it this uh, October. Visceral and poetic. This is pure cinema. Like so many other is films that... by Misaki Kobayashi, it is art. He is always in complete control. Our senses are rattled by the striking designs, ghostly mm-hmm. camera work, and top-class sound design music that distorts, crashes, and tingles, uncontrollably bleeding into each story, like the falling Ew. snow, rain, crashing seas, and rolling fog that surrounds and obscures. Quidon lingers in the mind like a ghost lost by time. Come on, dude. This guy's a little too hot on himself, I think. Uh, that's kind of the dangers of letterboxed uh, writing, his, that mm-hmm. type of thing. Uh, five stars. If you try and stab a ghost, then you try and stab the three ghosts that take its place. You don't even want to know what happens after that. Ooh, you nice, dude. Yeah. Uh, five stars. A meticulous, awe-inspiring masterpiece. I can't believe the perfection and scope of what Kobayashi captures here. The third segment, Hoichi the Earless, has sequences that may among may be among the most stunning achievements in all of film. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, five stars. Artful prestige pictures are not what comes to mind at the mention of horror anthologies, but Masaki Kobayashi's Kwaidon is nothing short of magnificent, a truly masterful work. There are so many memorable images, a samurai waking up next to his ex-wife's corpse, a snow witch whispering a mm. promise of death, a nautical Bushido battle, a blind uh, Biwa player covered in a protective sutra, a samurai fighting ghosts with a spear. <laughs> All of these compositions are rendered in painterly brushstrokes. The unsettling choice to frequently remove all diegetic sound is frequently made, particularly during action scenes, with only this a, a sparse score plunking and twanging occasionally. The effect is jarring and oddly tense. I felt myself drawn into the images of fights and flights while the music provided a satisfying arrhythmia. <laughs> you. So I have a really hard time um, taking any of these people seriously that are like, it is like perfect cinema peak cinema when you watch that first story and there's literally just hair being thrown off screen onto a guy's head <laughs> you're just like <laughs> it's like yeah that's master class cinema right there guys yeah all right so so i gotta mention though so uh, masaki kobayashi uh he's got some movies that we'll be watching uh in the criterion collection mm-hmm. uh one of the movies he directed was a little film called uh, harakiri which is oh, yeah. like one of the 
one like the all time best movies I've seen, I think, ever. Like legit. Yep. It's awesome. It's a incredible piece of movie making. So yep. he's not bad. It's just this Ooh, movie yeah. just doesn't feel right. Um he also directed that that the human condition, which is like three gigantic long movies. Mm-hmm. Uh there's I think it's about World War Two or like the life of like it's like a Japanese epic it's like set between like term post World War Two, and it's yeah. also like highly regarded. But we'll see how that plays out. And he also he directed another samurai movie called Samurai Rebellion, uh, which has got that old Toshiro mm. Mifune. And I've heard Ooh. very good things about it too. But I've also heard really good things about Quiet On. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Well, you know what, man? You can't win them all. Is he it, may have made some all time bangers, but is it us that we can't win them all? No, is it us, or is it, or, or is it the children? What? <laughs> that, that, that don't like this movie. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I don't know what happened just now. I I'm completely lost. <laughs> I'm just going off topic. I'm like, so is it us or is it the children that are wrong? It's the children, man, we're never wrong, except for that time that you thought uh, Oliver Twist was better than Great Expectations. Man, that's the only time you've a, ever been wrong. That is a deep cut. Mm-hmm. I stand alone on that too. So um, good. <laughs> it's, it's a fact, though. It's a fact. Uh, well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh well, that's it. Uh mm-hmm. after the break, we're going to start celebrating Christmas, and uh, hopefully not run into any like North American ghosts. They're more violent and weird. 